But let's fast forward, you've completed the audit. Congratulations, you've done all the field work. Now, what happens then? We have this concept of an engagement quality review in which a partner of the CPA firm who has not been involved in the audit, which is important because we want, now we're not gonna be fully independent here. We want as much independence as possible. This is an example of where we have sort of a cost benefit analysis because what would be the perfect thing to do? And this does happen at bigger firms where let's say PwC conducts an audit. Well, then maybe they hire EY to do a quality review of their audit where EY comes in and sees, okay, this is how PwC did their audit. Cool. She gave them a check. They did a great audit. So they would be independent. Now, maybe you might argue, oh, they're trying to screw over the competitors. I think uh, the accounting firms are, are big enough these days. They, they don't have to worry about you know getting at each other that much in nuance. But generally speaking here, right? a partner at the CPA firm who's not been involved with the audit, so maybe this is someone who audits manufacturing companies while you're auditing financial service companies, they perform a secondary review of the audit documentation. So yes, when I was saying there are like, let's say EY coming into audit PwC, when you get into big public companies, there are actual requirements to have that done. But as we mentioned here, this is general accounting. We're not talking specifically just these massive firms. Here, this is gonna be part of the expected that the firm, remember the firm's in control of their own quality procedures, and this is something that they should do, just inherently by nature, right? Also, this is just for your own benefit as a firm. You wanna make sure that people are checking each other's work, that you're doing a good job. And this review is generally gonna focus on the evaluation of the significant judgments that were made by the team and their conclusions. That's important because judgments are subjective. Judgments are items that you say, okay, uh, I don't see a clear, black and white answer in the authoritative literature. So I, as an auditor, am going to make a judgment call and decide what I think is best. So if you have other people coming in and looking at that, it's gonna help you a little bit to decide, did we make the right call? If the audit firm determines that a quality control review is required, however, has not been performed yet, the audit engagement partner should refrain from issuing the audit report until after the quality control review has been completed. If you're ready to issue an opinion, but your firm has decided that, yes, you need that quality review. Like I said, it's, it's required for, let's say, massive audits, but you know, you've got a normal size audit firm. It's not gonna be required every time, but if the firm has a, a policy that says, okay, for every third audit we do, we, we should have a quality control review, and you have not done that yet, you can't issue an opinion until that quality control review has been completed. Next up, an engagement quality review should document what? Well. Yes, we, uh, you know, just like we document absolutely everything in an audit, if you've got a quality review, someone's reviewing your audit for quality, you should document that. Okay? You, want, you don't want to just sign off and say, that, hey, you did a great audit, and then that's that. No, you want to say, you did a great audit, and here's the reasons why. Or you did a poor audit, and here are the reasons why. You want to document the identity of the reviewer and any other personnel. That's pretty important, right? Just documenting. So we can go back and ask anyone, hey, what were you thinking when you uh, gave them this grade? You want to do the date on which the reviewer provided concurring approval of issuance. So on what date did the reviewer say, yep, you're good. You can give them the unmodified opinion. You want to document which documents were reviewed by the reviewer. It's kind of responsibility. Okay, I missed this one document that was incorrect. So it's not on me as a reviewer. Just documentation, right, of, of what we actually looked at. You want to document any deficiencies in the audit that were discovered. You want to document any recommendations for improvement. I mean, these, these make sense. You want to make sure that what's the point of a quality review? It's to improve. So doing these two things would very much help you improve. Lastly, you want an attestation that the review was conducted in accordance with GAS. So generally accepted auditing standards have policies and procedures in line to ensure that you are properly engaging in this quality review. Let's talk a little bit further about this quality review. The purpose of it is to determine whether an audit organization's internal quality control system is in place and operating effectively and to pro provide assurance that these policies and procedures are being followed. Great, wonderful, right? It's the firm's job to establish a, an environment of quality control, but if they're not doing that, then what's the point? It's kind of like with internal controls. You can, and we'll, if you haven't seen it yet, SOC 1 and SOC 2, type one and type two reports, the SOC one type one report says, okay, internal controls, they were designed and implemented properly, but it doesn't assess if they were actually being followed. If, if they're actually operating effectively, a type two report actually does assess that. So this is kind of like a, a type two report. It's saying, yes, you designed and implemented the procedure properly, but 
Despite that, are they still working properly? That's what we're looking at here. The objective of the engagement quality reviewer is to perform an evaluation of the significant judgments. We saw that. I want to make that point again. Pretty important there. And the related conclusions reached informing the overall conclusion, which is unmodified opinion, a qualified opinion on the engagement, and in preparing the engagement report, if a report is to be issued in order to determine whether to provide concurring approval of issues. This is, we see this term again. Do we concur? Do you agree that we should issue this report, that we should issue this? Uh, opinion, yes or no. That's up for the particular engagement. The engagement quality reviewer must be an associated person of a registered public accounting firm. And the reason being, they have to follow their own strict guidelines. You can't just be a random person off the street, even if you are CPA, because in that, and we talk about that more in the, uh, if you're a member of public practice in the ASCPA code of conduct, what rules you have to follow. So if you are an associated person of a public accounting firm, you have to maintain a certain level of standards, independence, quality. An engagement quality reviewer from the firm that issues the report or communicates the conclusion must be a partner or another individual in equivalent position, essentially saying it needs to be a higher person. This also makes sense, right? The partners don't really get down and dirty and do the actual work like the associates. So what are they doing all day instead of, uh, you know, yes, they're getting new clients on board, but they're going to do something like this as well. Engagement quality reviewer may also be an individual from outside the firm. Talked about that a little bit. It can be from another firm. Probably better if it is, but it's probably more expensive and a lot to ask for someone to come in and do that. <laughs> Lastly, the quality reviewer must have competence, independence, integrity, and objectivity. Now, with these, this being said, right, they're not going to have 100% independence. No one is going to have 100% independence. I mean, the person in all of this audit entire exam who should have the most independence is us as the external auditor. And even that, like, no one's completely independent. I mean, sorry, hot take here. No one's completely independent. Yes, sorry, if the ASCPA is listening, and per, per the guidelines, you need 100% independence. Yes, but so I'm saying, you might be doing a quality review. You might have a 50-person firm, and you know the partner who did the, the, the audit, right? So you're not going to be completely independent, but you need to do your absolute best to be as independent as possible. That's, that's the take here. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.